welcome, coaches. First of all, thank you, you all both for joining me. Yeah. Uh, you got busy schedules even in the summertime, so to get both you guys in the same room, I feel like that's an accomplishment in itself <laughs> for, for a little chunk of time. But um, like I kind of told you guys what I want to talk about a little bit. So to kind of start off, you know, when you look across college athletics, um, especially right here in the Triangle. I can only compare you guys because you're right here in the backyard, some big time programs, but some schools are known as football schools. Other schools can, can be considered basketball schools, but it's very rare um, when you come to a situation like this where you, fi you find high success at, 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 in, in both sports. And I, and I think back to a tweet, um, I think I was talking to you in a tweet, and then you respond and says, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. And is that kind of how you guys kind of, you know, view the situation here at North Carolina Central? <laughs> Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think, you know, things that Lavelle does for his program, especially from a branding standpoint, it definitely helps us for football. Uh, when you get a chance to turn on television, you get a chance to see our basketball team playing on national television, playing against big time opponents. Obviously, when, now when we go in that young man's home from a recruiting standpoint, we get a chance to talk to some of our future student athletes. They get to say, oh yeah, I saw those guys, I saw you guys play on basketball and I saw you win on television. So that definitely helps us uh, from a recruiting standpoint, get a different caliber of athlete. It's the same, um, you know, I have to concur with, with, with what Max said. I just remember I was hired in 2009, and I remember at my press conference, I was, you know, because it was a disarray then, you know, we were making the transition. People really weren't sure on how and where this thing was going to go. We just had some hope. That was the only possibility. And I remember telling everyone, I said, if this is going to work, everyone has to row in the same direction. You know, football got to be at its best. Um, Softball got to be at his best. Uh, the ball boy got to be at his best. Whoever pops the popcorn, it got to taste really great that night, you know, so on and so forth. Because when you're a school that probably lacks some of the resources of your peers in the triangle, you can always make up for it with good old Southern values and support and love for one another. And I, I think that's, that's really what's gotten us by. Um, we were in Louisiana and we were almost late to our games. Our kids didn't want to get off the bus because they were playing uh, in the Celebration Bowl. And we were cheering and we were doing everything. And I just cut my uh, speech kind of short because I wanted to go check my phone and I'm on ESPN and it's freezing sometime. Man, I was just going berserk. But we were all pulling for those guys. And I think that's what's um, been indicative of our success. Because, Matt, when you hear something like that, what, what's your reaction to it? His guys were on the bus on the way to a game, but they were still fully supporting the football team. Uh, it makes me feel proud. I mean, it's no different than uh, when at the basketball games. I'm sitting at the barber shop uh, back, in the, back in March and watching Lavelle play in the national tournament. I mean, and it just, it just reflects where our programs uh, have, have gone so far. You know, when you got these student athletes, they're supporting one another. And it's not just basketball, it's all across the board. We take our guys to some of the volleyball games. A lot of the volleyball young ladies help us from a recruiting standpoint. And if we're going to all make this thing work, like Lavelle said, we're all going to have to be going in the same direction. And that's not only just administration, that's also our own student athletes. You know, they support one another and they cheer for one another. They're their, they're their own biggest fans. At some schools that you may know of, are some coaches territorial? Like, hey, if I'm a successful football coach or a successful basketball coach, I don't want to interact with them. This is my program. We have a little fence around our program, and don't don't bother us. We won't bother you. Yeah, that's ego. Yeah. You know, at the end at the end of the day, that's ego. I'm a grown man. I've accomplished enough in my lifetime for me not to have my chest out saying, "Don't bother me." Um, any grown man will tell you that you have to be a never-ending learner, and he'll tell you sometimes. I just go to his practices and walk on the field. And, and see how he's communicating with his team. He's a great communicator. And they have to communicate well because how is he getting this signal to Malcolm Bell when Malcolm can't hear him? What is, what is he reading on this play card, et cetera, et cetera? How can he communicate non-verbally to him? I want to know all those things. And I've always learned more from football guys because they have more personalities to manage within itself. And he'll tell you, I'm on the sidelines of, every game like I'm a, I'm a football fanatic and you know I played in high school things of that nature so I just love what he what he's doing and, and the route that he's taking the program it's really helped us you know in terms of our recruiting season official 
campus visits normally happens during football season. Right. So to see them provide that energy and excitement and a wonderful brand of football, it helps us. And during basketball season, when we're in the midst of it, I know exactly where the football players are going to be. Nine times out of ten, they're barking at the opposition, you know, and it just helps us, man. This is, and, and the thing is, it's organic. This yeah. is an organic relationship. We call, we text, we talk on the phone, um, and that always helps. And our kids can feel that vibe. And now I think that's where the support comes with one another. And that actually answered my next, next question because, you know, you see some programs, it's like a coach shows up, wave his hand, they leave with the yeah. cameras off on. But yeah. I've seen you at football games. I've mm -hmm. seen you in your normal seat of the basketball games. And like I said, the kids probably do feel off that. Um, I remember when I talked to uh, Coach Trisha Stafford Odom, do basketball, women's basketball coach, she mm -hmm. said that uh, she reached out to both of you guys, or talked to one of you guys, talked, and reached out to the other. But she said she didn't want to be the weak link. <laughs> and so that goes back to that iron sharpens iron. Right. And it goes back to lifting up other coaches. Can you kind of elaborate and talk about that a little bit? You know, I've got a chance to talk to Coach Odom a few times, and, you know, one of the things that I like about it is her energy. And I think the biggest thing is that she's going to provide a certain type of energy to our entire program. Not wanting to be the weak link, wanting to, you know, you're only good as your weakest link. Mm -hmm. And I think she's going to come in here and she's going to provide a certain energy for, the, for these young ladies and for our entire program. Anytime you get a new coach, it's a sense of anticipation, it's a sense of excitement. And that's one of the things I'm excited about to see, you know, what she brings to the table in her tenure here. Obviously, both of you guys are, are very competitive, your coaches, and you've probably been playing sports for a long time. Yeah. So when you see, uh, you know, Mac go undefeated in, in the MEAC and, and win mm -hmm. another ring in the yeah. fall, you kind of you kind of looking at your child, okay, I'm ready to get back on the basketball court and, and bring a ring here as well? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I think, you know, and he, he probably, he don't, he probably don't know this. This is the first time I probably ever told this story. When he was hired, okay. um, I went to his press conference. And afterwards, everyone was, was leaving, going back to uh, their respected areas. And Chancellor Saunders White, God rest her soul, she grabbed my arm, and we, we were walking down the steps of the student union. And she said, um, Coach, make sure you're always there for him now. Promise me that. All right. She said, make sure you're always there for me. And she said it in a motherly fashion where she said a few words, but I really knew what it meant. And basically what she was saying was, and I, I said, Chance, he's going to be okay. Like, don't worry about that. But basically what she was saying is, what I, to reiterate my opening statement, we all have to do this together. And if I was coming in and he was already here, she would have tapped him on his arm and said, Jerry, make sure Lavelle is, is okay now. Make sure you take care of him. So when you have that leadership and you fall under the umbrella of that, it's almost a welcoming for any new coach that's going to come in. It's something I'll never forget. Have you seen it, or you know any reasons of her, any reasons why it doesn't work at so many other programs? Like you said, ego plays a part in it too, but there are, you know, there are bigger programs with more revenue, more resources that it should be able to work, but for right. whatever reason it doesn't. Do you have any idea, any thoughts, or any theories of why it doesn't work at some, some other programs other than ego from the coaches? Uh, just from some of the coaches that I know personally um, that really don't get along with the other revenue sport, it's, you know, it's that it's the ego of a man, which we all driven by, and that can be a positive or a negative. And when it gets in the way um, of, of success and you want more attention for your program or you want, um, you know, whatever the case may be that you desire that you're not necessarily getting, then it affects, you know, the play. And sometimes you hear this is a football school, this is a basketball school. I'm sure Jerry believes it's a football school, and he should believe it's a football school, right? As a former basketball player and understanding who John McClendon was in the tradition, I believe it's a basketball school. And that's okay because his passion, believing it's a football school, you can see that in the form of what, whether, whether he's coaching or throwing headsets or whatever. And I'm sure when I'm on the sideline, you can see my passion as well. So we both have egos, but it's controlled egos where it's never going to bash. And I've always asked him, matter of fact, our rings for, for this year, we're kind of, we kind of modeled it after him, you know, because I like, we, we already did it a couple of times. And I really loved his taste and what, they did with the black ice cream, so I bought it to my guys. Those are the type of things that, those are nuances that allow you to win and continue to be successful. 
want to add to that real good. Yeah, I, I mean, when you look at different programs, there are a number of reasons. It could be, like you said, from a resource standpoint, from a location standpoint. A lot of those things kind of all play a, a big factor. But one of the things that I always wanted to do when I got a chance to lead up my own program was I knew that it was going to take everybody to make the deal work. And just like we said before, whatever success that he has, that helps us because we're able to build off that and we're able to not just sell North Carolina Central football, we want to sell North Carolina Central the entire university. So that means any success they have across campus in the science department, the music department, anything like that, because these student athletes now, when they come on your campus, they're not just regular old football players or baseball players. They have a lot of interests that go way beyond that. And the more things that we can sell and the more things that we can present to them to say, hey, look here, we not only have a great basketball or football program, we have a great criminal justice program, great business program. Those are the things that we try to sell from an entire university standpoint. Because the more you can sell, there's no different than in life. The more things that you can do, the more opportunities that's going to open up. Same way with a student athlete. The more things that we can sell from the triangle area and from, you know, on, on our campus, the more things like that, that's going to help us get certain student athletes. We've all seen how, how sharp Coach Moe is on the sidelines. If he's asking for fashion tips on your ring, you're doing something. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I want to go back to, um, I think you and I talked during your signing period, uh, one of your transfer kids, he said, hey, you said he came down for a basketball game, saw the energy, and was like, I want to go here. Oh, yeah. Have you had kids come, you know, they visit the football season, they see the energy, they see them winning, like, Coach, this is where I want to be. Absolutely. And we, we honestly, we, we plan around that, that time period, you know, whether it's homecoming or whether it's, um, a lot of times we're not here doing the A&T game, but, you know, right now, if it's not, if the weather permits, the stands have a certain type of energy when they're playing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what football game we bring um, our kids to on a visit. Once they see this energy and they get the, um, you know, full understanding of what North Carolina Central is about, they commit on the spot nine times out of ten when we get them early. So we had to do that this year. So. It works. The same thing with you? No oh, doubt. So. Yeah, when you talk about January, there's only so many Saturdays that we have basketball games and that we can have really official visits down. But that energy, our crowd and our student section at the basketball game is just unbelievable. It's unreal. Uh, the energy and the emotion that the student athletes, the students show during the course of the game, our student athletes, potential recruits, they see that. They see the vision. They see, they see, the, they see the program. They see how successful we are. And they, they want to be a part of that. And not only that, when they get a chance to walk around and go to the popcorn, go to concession stands, things like that, they run into different alums. And mm -hmm. then the alums show the passion and how much they love Central. And that's, that's what students want to be a part of. They say, hey, I want to be a part of that legacy. I want to be a part of that tradition. You know, when Lavelle comes out, he brings the team out, and they're running around the court, and they're, they're running up and down dominating people. They get that same attitude from our football players as well. Like, we are NCCU. Oh, you know, we soar. Those kind of things, they truly believe that. Talk about uh, running to alums. Have you ever had a recruit on campus and you just uh, you were showing them around, you just happen to, happen to run into Coach Moten and kind of, you know, he's very visible. Everybody right. knows who he is, yeah. Kind yeah. of bringing by Coach Moten's office. No no doubt. Yeah. We've had student athletes running to Coach. I, I've been bringing guys in McDougal and, uh, you know, they've actually been from sometimes the same area. Same area. You know, we had a couple of kids from Florida this past offseason. They, they came in, they ran into Coach. He had some recruits from Florida. And I think he ended up getting his recruits and I ended up getting my recruits. Yeah. And that was just by coincidence. And those kind of little things, you know, they may, they, those guys may come in here and they may be all Americans. And just that little encounter that they had when they were on campus with Coach and, and the potential recruits going to help them, help them get here. We actually have a kid that's signing um, that, you know, he's verbally committed or whatever, but um, we actually, he's the one who really recruited the kid more than I, I did. Um, you know, and it's, I got to thank him for that, man, because he saved me a lot of time, a lot of energy, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of back and forth. And, you know, that's, once again, it's the, I think it goes back to the relationship just being organic. You know, I, I, he's my friend before he's North Carolina Central football coach. You know, I respect not only what he's done on the field, but what he's done off the field. When I see him interact with his family, it's almost like seeing a, a mirror reflection of me, um, you know, with his wife and kids. Same thing, we get our hair cut at the same spot by the same barber. You know, so it's, it's all organic and, and he, you know, he knows anything that he ever needs from me. Um, 
you know what I'm here and vice versa and it all reflects in what we're doing with our programs. With the visibility you guys have had in the last four or five years of whether it be a bowl game or NCAA tournament game or just a televised game, um, has this become a prime landing spot more recruits or transfers reaching out to you guys because they've seen you guys so much in the success that's been going on with both programs? Uh, on our part, no doubt. Uh, when you look at what he's been able to do uh, on the court and off the court, you know, young people, they, they're they on social media, they, they watch television, they're on YouTube, they see all those different things. And, you know, if something isn't quite going right or they're looking for a change of venue, they say, well, where can I go and have a, a, a significant impact, but at the same time still have a big time feel about where I'm going. And I think North Carolina Central basketball and football present both of those. Uh, you know, the biggest thing about Lavelle is not only is he a great basketball coach, but he's a great person. So his name and the people that he has a chance to touch on a regional and then on a national stage, he knows a lot of different people, have a lot of different contacts. So when we get that young person, sometimes they know him and, and they want to meet him or they, or they know what kind of person he is. Parents, you know, he's a great player here. So just in the area, people know, know his name and they know when they step into this program, we're trying to run a quality program just like he's, out, he's running a quality program. So they know what kind of people that they're going to be around when they come to Central. Yeah, ditto. Um, you know, it's, it's the irony is, because, you know, our day is so filled with recruiting and we're chasing this and we got a million five years to put out and we got to make sure this kid is graduating, this kid in class, et cetera, et cetera, that some of the things that take place, it really slips our mind until we're reminded again. And one of my childhood friends, um, you know, her and I are really close. Um, you know, it was hard for me to believe. I remember she was pregnant with her son. And now he graduated from high school this year. And she just kept telling me throughout the years, she said, well, um, it's a couple of MEAC schools that's on them and a couple of Southern Conference schools that's on them. And she said, um, and I know her personality and I know exactly how she is. And she was like, so what about Central? And I said, look, and she was asking about him and mm -hmm. his character. And I was like, I don't know the coaches anywhere else, but forget the football coach he's not going to play for a better man. And it warmed my heart when she said, that meant a lot coming from you because I know how tough of a judge of character you are just based off where we're from. So I know I can always trust you. And it, 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 it warmed my heart to know the kid committed here. You follow what I'm right, saying? And right. she texts me every week, thank you so much, I love you, and yada, 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 and you're such a blessing, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, that's just one of the stories on how it all comes back full circle. Um, last season, you guys, uh, season ended in the, in the NCAA tournament, and your season ended uh, in the Celebration Bowl, both big time games for the program, big visibility, but it still stung nevertheless, you know, it didn't end like you guys wanted. You guys talk, I mean, your season ended, did he reach out to you, did you reach out to him, or vice versa when, when your season ended? Cause you guys can relate, you know, it's a similar yeah. feel. Yeah, yeah. you know, when, when they got back from the trip, uh, coming from uh, the tournament get first round game. Uh, I was there to, to, to greet them, you know, as along with a lot of other fans, you know, because I'm a fan mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day. And just wanted to know the basketball team, the players and, and coach uh, Lavelle to know that, you know, you got my support. I understand. I've been there before. I know it's going to sting. I know it's going to hurt. But I know as well, you're going to do a great job of getting this program back to that tournament. It's not over. It's just the beginning. And, and likewise, um, you know, when, when you call someone your friend, what affects them kind of affects you um, in a sense. And I just remember checking my phone once again because we were in Louisiana and we were about to play McNeese State. And I just kept checking my phone, checking my phone, checking my phone. And I was like, look, we're going to win this game. And by that time, we started playing. Mm -hmm. So at halftime, I'm looking and the score said 10 to 9 at the celebration bowl. And I was like, okay, good. We scored. We about to kick a field goal. I kicked the extra point, and the phone just stayed on 10 to 9. I was like, hold on, what happened? So after the game, I called them, and then I saw the highlights on how it ended, and my heart just, I was like, oh, man, you get there. It's like climbing a ladder. It hurts if you fall off the ladder once you get up higher. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was for me. That's what it was for him. And one thing I told him, you know, a couple of years ago is things are going to be tougher for him because he's going to, it's, he's going to become a victim of his own success. Mm -hmm. And 
I wanted to share that with him because when he got here, people were like, man, just just beat a and yeah, We don't care what you do, just beat a and Well, man, just, just finish in the top five in the conference and so on and so forth. And then just have a winning season. And now anything short of a championship yeah. Yeah. is a failure. So, and that's a, great, that's a great problem to have. And we're both under that same microscope, but it encourages us to continue to work hard and never become complacent. It's funny you brought it up because that's going to be my next question about that, right. that speaking of your own success. <laughs> but now, I mean, moving forward, how do you keep soaring higher to the next level? I mean, how do you, I know you guys aren't probably not worried about keeping pace with one another. You just worry about your program. But if they succeed, obviously you want to succeed. But if they succeed, obviously it's good for the whole university. But how do you keep it at this level for both programs moving forward? I think it goes back to culture. And I think it goes back to leadership and administration. As long as those things continue to stay consistent, and you always fight every day the same way when you, the first day you got the job to the last day you got the job to get things done, to, to move things, the same way you recruit, the same passion that you show on the field on game day and during practice. As long as you can keep those kind of things consistent, consistent you're going to have a chance to continue to rise, continue to, to be successful. Now, that's tough. That's easier said than done because with success, a lot of times, not only from coaches, from players, from administration, from people, uh, they become complacent. They do things because they think it's just it's always been that way or it's just going to happen. You're just going to wake up in the morning and it's going to happen. And as the head football coach or the head basketball coach or the chancellor or the AD, the thing that you have to do is you have to try to continue to keep people focused and continue to keep people on task to, hey, the same way we worked, the day we worked, walked in here to get that success, we have to continue like heck to continue to fight to do those types of things. I think that's the only way you're going to be able to kind of sustain success in any place. Yeah, same thing. It's, it's he, I think he said the key word is, is culture. You know, we have a culture of accountability. Um, we have a culture of greatness. And we're committed to excellence and we expect greatness. And I'll never forget, um, Chancellor went with us to the NCAA tournament. And she said, thank you so much. And we're just riding on the plane, and I just thought she was trying to start a conversation. I was like, for what? And she was like, when I arrived at Chancellor, as Chancellor, she said, do you know how many freshmen that we had committed? And I said, nah. She said, like 90-something. Mm -hmm. And she said, do you know how many freshmen we have now? And I said, nah. She said, we reached our capacity. And that's because of football and basketball. And she said, the visual marketing that you guys have provided, I want you to take that responsibility seriously because the chemistry department benefits, um, the criminal justice department benefits, the nursing, theater, mass communications, et cetera, et cetera. And I've always taken that responsibility serious. So, you know, for me, it's you only good as your, your next move. And right now, this team that's returning from, for us, we haven't accomplished anything. And I will, I will remind them of that every single day. And, um, you know, we just kind of filter everything out and just move forward. Here's my last question real quick. How, do, you, do your kids interact a lot? I know you, with a basketball team, a little smaller group. Right. And then your bigger team probably has clicks within the team. But do they, the basketball players and football players kind of interact? You see that a lot and they're really tight. Culturally. They know each other a lot. Like I see, I hate following my, our kids on Twitter. Like I'm not <laughs> interested. But I see, um, you know, some of them retweet each okay. other or they talking. Or, and I see them around campus or you go to the CAF. Um, I think the way the time is constructed, you know, being a athlete, student athlete is really like having a full-time job and a part-time. You know, so our guys probably spend a little more time with each other and his, his too because that's just what's regimented from both of us as coaches and leaders. Um, but I think the beauty is I get to know some of his players. Like I'm a huge Malcolm Bell fan. Yeah. And I was like, boy, you better represent that 15, <laughs> man, because, you know, that was my number. <laughs> Incredible kid. So I, I've, I've gotten to know him and, you know, Quentin Atkinson and, you know, all those guys throughout the years, man. So it's really, it's really great Well, they see me and say, what's up, coach, or whatever. And sometimes I was trying to get in shape. I was conditioning with them in the summer. I was like, let me just go around with the football team. I ran with the linemen, but, you know, I ran it, you know. But it's, it's always good when you can interact from both parties. This is both of you guys, so we have to go first, okay. whatever. All right, so I'll start with you, Coach Bob. If you're recruiting the other coach, you're recruiting Coach Matt. 
Mm-hmm. Play basketball. <laughs> Which position is he playing on the basketball court? Uh, point guard. Point guard, why? He's the offensive coordinator in football. Um, so he has to see, envision, and predict what the defense next step is going to be. And that's what football really is. And, and I always tell him, you know, being a football guy, and I play the quarterback position, I always tell him I think he's a genius because the way he can put those kids in position to be successful and maximize their strengths. And he see things that, and I'm, I'm also giving him scout reports on other teams. So if I saw a t play on football, you know, a week before, I'm like, look, all we got to do is stop Tariq, whatever, whatever. And, and he, he just sees things a step in advance. So definitely he'll be my point guard. So if you're recruiting, Coach Moten, what did we play for you? Uh, I think Coach is going to be my wide receiver and he's going to return punts and kicks. Uh, when I look at what he does and his style, uh, the way he handles his football team, it reminds me of, of explosive. You know what I'm saying? He's a, he's a guy that he's explosive with his players. They play an explosive brand of ball. When I watch those guys play, what I see is the way that they compete and the way they fly around to the ball and play defense and things like that. That's what I think of when I think of a, a, a wide receiver that's just going to instantly impact the game. You know, you might not have to play uh, 40, 50 plays. You might only have two or three catches, but those two or three catches or those two or three punt returns or kickoff returns, they're going to change the game dynamically. Uh, you think uh, about a guy like a Tyreek Coyne that played for a and Tyreek was worth at least three touchdowns uh, every game, whether he got those touchdowns or whether he put his team in position to get those touchdowns. And that's what he's done. You know, he hasn't coached a down of football, but he set me up for success to have a successful program. Can you take a hit going across the middle? <laughs> no, I was going to tell him, like, if, <laughs> it was, I might, we might have to get some transfer paperwork with the kick return. <laughs> like, because I don't know if I can keep my own this ball and they running at me like that. And no slant routes. I got to no go. Slant. I'm running all streaks, all nines. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Coach Mack, what's your favorite basketball movie? And Coach Bolton, your favorite football movie? Wow. Oh. Um, Probably my favorite basketball movie. I think like everybody else is loving basketball. Uh, you know, I, I love the dynamics between the women's sport and the men's sport. Cause I'm a big fan of both. I, I like watching the women's basketball. I like watching the men's basketball. And that movie, you know, obviously it was a love story, but also too, it was centered around athletics. And that was probably my favorite one. When I was small, my, it was uh, The Longest Yard. The real The, real the yard. Longest the real. Yard <laughs> um, with Burt Reynolds. But then it changed. I, I had the pleasure to um, get to know um, Ike Boone. Um, and then it, it just, after hearing his stories and some of the things that he went through as a coach, it really instantly became Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans. Yeah. Coach Mack, for a bonus, did you know that uh, Coach Moat was actually in a basketball movie? In a basketball <laughs> I didn't know that. That's a bonus right That's there. That's a bonus, right? You That's didn't know that? Bonus. I didn't know He had a cameo in a, He Got Game. He right? Got Game, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, all right, third question. Uh, I'll go with you first, Coach Mack. If you could pull one player from Coach Moat's team, who would it be? What position would they play? And coach, well, if you could pull one player from this team, who would it be? What position would they play? I feel like I already know your answer. You can go first, coach. Um, I forget his name. His name disappears right now. No, the the, the guy, number ten, Graf, DeJuan Graf. Uh, yes, yeah, DeJuan Graf. Gra- Graf would be would be the guy. I mean, when you talk about a guy that could take over a game, an older, more mature. I saw him play that that point guard position, and he he was just a guy that he controlled the entire game. Uh, I think that's one of the things I know told him this. I think when you look at his team from the previous year to this year, uh, that's one of the things I see. Just he elevated, he put guys in position to be successful. He was a player on another level. Yeah, that, definitely Malcolm <laughs> Bell. Man. I'm a Malcolm. Shout out Malcolm Bell, wherever you are. That's my guy right there. Um, and I, I, the reason, you know, I, I love Malcolm so much is because I saw his initial struggles as a freshman, and I saw some of those str- same struggles as a sophomore. And I thought he did an incredible job because the first thing, and I played that position, the first thing you got to have at that position is confidence. And he gave him that. And I don't know if he condensed the, the offensive package and just gave him some throws that he knew this kid could make. But once that kid completed some throws, you know, we all witnessed um, the, the, the reemergence of a young Michael Vick out there, and I was just I was just excited to see him, man, because he always was walking with his chest out doing games, and it didn't seem like he was nervous, and I knew he would show the football on the jaw and just keep it around the corner and just be gone. Like I just love that stuff. So definitely, Mike Malcolm Bell. What position would he play for you? Uh, point guard. And graph for you. Point uh, quarterback. Quarterback. Okay. <laughs> um, if you could, 
would you guys switch coach your sports for a day? Would you put on the headset and would you come in the gym filming <laughs> the nice suits and coach each other sports for a day? Uh, I tell you, basketball is the coolest sport in the world. <laughs> I mean, when I see Coach, he gets to walk out there, and <laughs> he gets to dress up nice, and, uh, you know, he, he yells, but still he got his shirt tucked in, still got his uh, suit buttoned up. I mean, that, that, that's pretty cool to me. Yeah. So, uh, if I, yeah, I, I would trade, trade sports for a day if I was there. Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, same thing with them running out the tunnel with the smoke, with the with the black shades <laughs> on. It can't be raining. Like it got to be the weather got to be perfect for me. If not, I'm, I got to go up in the booth and call <laughs> from the booth. But just being on the sidelines, man, managing things. And, you know, I love when he call a touchdown. and He has no facial expression at all. Like he's just on to the next play. He got the card over his face and he's just on to the next play. So I think that's kind of cool as a as a head coach. And then my last question for either one of you, any, any pregame rituals or any certain songs you listen to before every game? Uh, I personally don't. I, I don't have any. Uh, it's kind of whatever is motivational uh, that day or, or, or that or that's time of the season, so to speak. Uh, I'm always like on the road to the game, on the bus. I'm always going to be listening to my headphones and things like that. I'm a sleeper on the bus on road games. I sleep. Like, I, as a matter of fact, I tell my director of football operations, don't touch me, don't talk to me. I'm about to go to sleep for this whole <laughs> bus ride. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I used to listen to um, Justin Timberlake Mirrors because we, we had our best game one night before, and I played that before the game. So I just listened to that for the entire year. Um, you know, I'm just kind of, uh, what you call that? Uh, when you, I, it just, Superstitious, <laughs> man. I'm extremely superstitious. Um, so I changed it up a little bit last year, but it's just whatever to put me at ease because I, I sure can't listen to their music. I can't allow them <laughs> to, to, to ease my pain because I don't understand nothing um, that they're listening to. I don't understand any of the lyrics. So it's just whatever is fitting at the time for me. Appreciate it, guys. Hey, no, no thanks, problem. Joe. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.